Today we're going to be looking at Photoshop and making a shadow collage of ourselves uh, using various tools. Uh, first of all, let me sh let's start with uh, the picture. Uh, you're supposed to take a picture of yourself with a profile view. Uh, what I did was use my little Canon camera, uh, just took a side view on a white background, and then we're going to use that in our uh, project today or lesson. Uh, not the best, I just took the picture on the side view, uh, but basically the key is to make sure that it's a white background so it's easy to lasso out. Now there's different ways of getting ourselves out of this picture. Uh, the first option, is probably the most common, is using like the magnetic lasso tool right here. Uh, if we use a magnetic lasso tool and we can just outline. If you make a mistake, like I did there, you can hit backspace and just go back. And then you can go over. Um, I guess I should have combed my hair today. Never comb my hair. Uh, oh, I guess I should get a haircut too now. <laughs> Poofing. I'm going to cut some of that hair off. Come down here. Now my shirt color is kind of light, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult. But it'll manage. When you get down here, you can just come across really fast. Get my tie that I have to wear every day. And almost done. Almost. Make sure there's not sharp points. It'll look kind of funny if there's uh, sharp points like that. I'll make it more rounded and natural. Okay, so there we go. There's the lasso. And if you hold on the Alt or the Option key, you can zoom in and zoom out uh, in Photoshop. And then the control with your scroll is the whole operating system. So we have our new one. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make a new uh, document sheet. We're going to use international paper and A4. We're going to, it's going to be portrait view, so this is correct, height and width. Resolution is 300. That's good for printing because you may print this. Uh, color mode, we're going to be using CMYK, um, cyan, magenta, yellow, black. And that's used for... Because most printers they use four colors. Uh, some do RGB, red, green, blue. Um, it's also this is better for more uh, for your computer screens. But today we're going to use CMYK. And uh, sometimes it's good to save the presets so you don't always have to change these over and over. If we're going to be using these a lot, I'm going to call it my A4 and hit OK. And then I'm going to name this shadow and then by Mr. Heil. You can put in your name there. And then hit OK. So now we have our new uh, size here. And notice it's only at 16%. That's why it's so small. Uh, if you want to zoom in, you can zoom in here to make it larger. So what I'm going to do is select here. Now notice this, it's selected. Now I'm going to go up here to go select and save selection because I may want to go back to that selection. I'm going to call it my selection because I may want to go back to this and edit my selection and instead of drawing it over again it'll automatically select. For example, let's, let's say I um, accidentally delete my selection. Oh no, my selection is gone. What am I going to do? Well, all you got to do is go back to Selection, Load Selection, and then go to My Selection, OK, and then there it is. So what we're going to do is going to uh, select our image and place it into our new size. OK, and I'm going to hit Command-T, and you always, when you resize, want to hold on the Shift key and go at the corner so that it um, keeps the same perspective. For example, if I don't use a shift key and I try moving it, I may go too wide and look too fat or look too skinny. 
So you don't want that. You want to keep the same ratio, hold down the shift key, and resize like that. Okay. So there we go. That looks about right. Um, something in design, you don't want to have it exactly in the middle. I looked, I looked too boxed in. You want to always off-center a little bit. And notice my edges are a little bit crisp here. So what I'm going to do is zoom out. I'm going to hit my eraser tool. If I click uh, or press E as an elephant or erase or write that tool and then go up here, you can change your hardness. Okay, what I'm going to do is use the eraser tool and kind of clean up the image a little bit. So notice... Uh, Notice like here there's this little jagged part that I missed. So what I'm going to do is have the eraser tool maybe smaller in size. Make sure your hardness is pretty much all the way to 100%. So we're going to take that hardness all the way. We don't want shadow edges. And notice here I'm going to take that off a little bit. So basically go around, clean up your image, make sure just the edges are fine. Later in this tutorial I'll show you guys how to um, like if you have like uh, spots you don't want you can take those out and clean them up and all that stuff but not today. So today we're just gonna make the shadow. So after you get the shape of the, your head and body that you want we're gonna go ahead and fill that color in. Um, what you're going to do is hold down the F of X and you're going to go to color overlay and for the color overlay uh, just choose actually red is probably a good color to choose in the past I've always chose black but black can sometimes uh, mixed in because basically we don't want any part of this color to be shown we want it all to be images so red is a good color because it'll show us uh, what image or what's not showing but I don't really like the color of red because when I was in school and I submitted essays my teacher would always mark them up in red and some bad experiences on that so I'm gonna hit orange a little bit better okay so now we got our shadow uh, let's go ahead and do our background now sometimes by default there's this background lock layer basically that's no good it does this you can't edit it, it can't do anything so what I'm gonna do is click and drag it down to our trash can and I'm gonna insert a new layer and we should always call our layers something so I'm gonna call this background because this is my background oh, background underscore color I'm going to move this to the back. Now, Photoshop works in layers, just like uh, when you make a cake. First you have like your plate, then you have like your uh, the cake part, and then maybe you have a middle filling, and then more cake part, and then frosting, then sprinkles, and who knows what you want to put on top. Same thing in Photoshop. We have all these different layers. Now, if you have a cake with all, frosting all over it, you don't know what kind of cake it is until you eat it because you don't know what's on the inside. So if it's a chocolate cake, you won't see that chocolate until you cut into that cake. Uh, same thing like this. If I want to, uh, let's say I want to fill this color, I'll select this layer, I'll go to uh, Edit, Fill, and I'm going to fill this with a background. And you can choose the background that you want. I'm going to choose Color, and I'm going to choose that color. Hit OK. <clears throat> now if this background color is on top, this is just like your cake. This is like the icing on the cake and you don't know what's inside this cake. So we put this background color at the bottom layer and notice now it's behind. So we just move them around. Uh, if you want to hide them, you just click on this little eye button and it hides it. So you can work with it. You can also lock a layer so you cannot change it, but then you can easily unlock it since I locked it in the first place. Okay, so uh, the most common problems I see students having is they're trying to chain or move like their shadow, but then like, oh, it doesn't move. Well, that's because your background